All right, Travis Wingood. So, uh, on this video, screw Mormons. I'm talking to my subscribers who are uh, former Mormons or anti-Mormons. You will be required to have a pre pre prerequisite of uh, knowing Mormon scripture, <clears throat> specifically the Book of Mormon. So that when I talk about the Tree of Life, you know that I'm referring to Lehi and Nephi's dream. And you also, as former Mormon and anti-Mormon, you are also aware that Joseph Smith Sr. had Tree of Life dreams before the Book of Mormon was written. So those kinds of prerequisites are necessary before you journey into this video. Because I do not have time. This is going to be long enough as it is <laughs> to go over all the minute details of what's going on here. But uh, <clears throat> as ex-Mormons, you obviously want nothing more to do with the church. Uh, but you do uh, watch guys like me. Uh, Zelf on the shelf because they're more entertaining and and such and and uh, thinker of thoughts because he's intellectual and serious about trashing the church <laughs> and John DeLynn who psychologically manipulates you in the reverse way that the church psychologically manipulated you he's a psychologist remember. That's why he doesn't want me either. Uh, but I can help him with his channel very greatly, very bigly. <laughs> he just doesn't want to do it. He's getting desperate now, trying to get an, a movement going against the church. And all he needs to do is bring me on. It'll require several episodes of Mormon podcast, but if he doesn't want to do it, I'm not going to be coddled into the psychological manipulation games. You've got to make the effort, John. I reached out to your request, and you're not taking it, so it's on you. <clears throat> but uh, don't you guys want to know the truth? I mean, obviously the church has lied to us. But don't you want to know what really happened? What the truth really is? You know, is it that the Smiths were the evil ones and were conniving this just to make money? As, uh, gee, they were so successful in making money, weren't they? <laughs> and that hat trick of Joseph, wow. It was, you know, a money pit. <laughs> Or is that the wrong word? <laughs> There's the movie with Tom Hanks uh, called The Money Pit. And the house collapsed and became a, a, a expenditure. So maybe money pit's not the right word. But uh, cash cow. There we go. <coughs> cash cow of rocks and a hat. <coughs> so if you've been paying attention, as you guys are most likely my subscribers, uh, you're aware that I'm talking about the Book of Mormon being encoded. And and I just exposed Helaman chapter 7 as referring to uh, not only Smith Sr. as Nephi son of Helaman, rather than Nephi son of Nephi son of Helaman. Uh, and uh, also having to do with the year 2020. Yeah, this year. The coup d'etat of America. That's what Helaman chapter 7 is all about, is the coup d'etat. And Nephi, son of Helaman, being the one to expose this to the people and uh, uncover the, the coup d'etat. Well, that's exactly what Joseph Smith Sr. did. Hi. That's why I've been trying to also uh, tie in the real LDS church history for you. That uh, 
Canandaigua, New York, is the keystone of Mormon history. <clears throat> As Joseph Smith Sr. was the master mason of the Freemason Lodge there in Canandaigua, New York. That's where William Morgan, who had a secret about the uh, Scottish Rites Illuminati, who uh, Sir William Scott published in his multiple volume set that the Illuminati had taken over the Scottish Rite, and whom Albert Pike confirmed. Yeah, we the Scottish Rite embraced the Illuminati and the Doctrine of Lucifer, which was going to be the end result of his three world wars. And, <clears throat> and so, uh, to leave out the Smiths and the Church from this historical fact of uh, the threat to America, uh, yeah, you're missing a lot of information. And I know it, it can, on the surface, suck that the Smiths were good guys trying to save America. I've had many people upset with that. Many people try to even force me to change my knowledge <laughs> to accept uh, their opinion that uh, the Smiths were also evil and a part of it all. <clears throat> but no, it was Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball. They were the bad guys in this story. And not only the bad guys, they were far worse than we ever had initially believed they were. <clears throat> they literally became satanic, murdering to get gain. Murdering Joseph Smith. <clears throat> and so... Let's go through the Book of Mormon again, and this time we'll go over the Tree of Life. Both Lehi and Nephi. Nephi being the son of Lehi. So take a gander as to who's who in this code. Yeah, Lehi is Joseph Smith Sr., Nephi is Joseph Smith Jr. So uh, let's begin as we're already eight minutes in. <laughs> so again, we'll refresh your memory on Genesis, or First Nephi, Genesis. First Nephi, chapter one. This is the year 2017. I've already gone over this. Revelation sign in chapter 12 <coughs> is right here in Lehi's dream. And so, uh, we then know that the first year when Zedekiah is put on the throne of Jerusalem refers to a president who will be put in the presidency in 2017. And that this president is a puppet king of a foreign government. <clears throat> and I know if you're a conservative and a Trump loyalist wearing your sign of the beast in your forehead yeah you're not gonna like this just like Mormons aren't gonna like this <laughs> but again do you want to know the truth or do you want to continue to live the lie of knowing the lies of the church <clears throat> and so then this dream we're going to carry on beyond the date that is given here he is given a book and in this book he reads that Babylon is going to be destroyed now we already know that Jerusalem is America for Washington DC and and that uh, a president will be put on the throne by a foreign government who represents Babylon. But it's now changing. Babylon is not this foreign government, this foreign nation. It is now 
reversed and it's now become America. And how do we know this? First Nephi, or first Nephi, uh, Doctrine and Covenants. <laughs> if you hadn't seen the previous video this morning on how I was woken <laughs> from my uh, intensifying dreams as of late by four uh, knocks. It wasn't knocks on the door like last time. They were like panel, uh, thick panel wood knocking. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, the sound that I was woken up to four times. So whether that has significance, I don't care. If it's God trying to communicate me, with me like he did Samuel, uh, who was in the temple with Eli, he already knows I'm listening. Why does he have to play these games? So, yeah, it was very frustrating this morning. <clears throat> Not finding anything that could correspond with being woken up. So I went back to bed, then woke up uh, to go running, and now I'm back, and I'm tired, and I'm exhausted, and I'm making mistakes in my speech. So, Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verse 16. The church service missionaries that were working on the, uh, the quad uh, with the topical guide, Bible dictionary, and footnoting to reference back and forth between all four scriptures, scripture body books. Because Progary Price has multiple books, as does the Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon. <coughs> and Doctrine and Covenants, sort of. Well, no, Doctrine and Covenants is all one book, unless you count the official declarations. But uh, they missed one, at least one, because there's more they missed. I've gone over several of those. But Babylon is referred to, and Babylon's supposed to fall. And it's not the government of America in this particular passage because he's talking to future Mormons because only future Mormons can violate the everlasting covenant and and, and so it's religion this goes to John's revelation talking about Babylon as the whore of the earth and that she shall fall uh, and uh, this is the religion as the Book of Mormon with the Tree of Life talks about the great and abominable church that rises up and is around in 2017 yes it's the Mormon church that we've all said yeah screw this we're out and I've been pointing out hey inverted pentagram church great and abominable church founded by the devil Isaiah 14 12 falling star there you go the great and abominable church is the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as Brigham Young's branch off having murdered Joseph Smith simple <laughs> unless you're stuck believing that the church is true like Mormons are then it becomes a conflict <laughs> a conundrum and so Babylon is that great and abominable church in Doctrine and Covenants and so here it has to do with the government uh, as well as the religion which are on the same land this is why it's not the Catholic Church that's the great and abominable church. <clears throat> They're in Italy. Italy has nothing to do with the signs of the three days of darkness. Because the first one was on 21st of August, 2017. 2017. <clears throat> and it, as I've gone over way back in the beginning, the a total solar eclipse occurred right in conjunction with the star Regis, the king star in Leo. 
And so, over the whole United States means that, yeah, the United States is doomed. But it's a period of time, not an instant at that moment event. Because there are three days of darkness. And the second one is on uh, October 14th or 24th, uh, 2023, and then I think 14th. And then uh, April 8th, 2024. That's the final one. That's the one where John in Revelation says he comes down on a white horse from outer space. He says it's a sign. Too many people take out sign from this equation. And when understanding the tree of life, you need to understand the difference between a sign and the event on earth. Because Matthew screws this up. Matthew refers to Isaiah, but doesn't say Isaiah. He just generally says, according to the word of the prophet, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus. What? No, Emmanuel. Son God. <clears throat> Not God with us, Matthew. <laughs> yes, I know, but that was a later creation in Hebrew with those uh, different definitions. And thus we see that it's that extra additional interpretation of Emmanuel is an anachronism, which I did that video not too long ago. And, and so Matthew doesn't even acknowledge it as a sign. He can't, because it didn't happen. <laughs> it only happens once in existence, and that's the 23rd September 2017. And so, yes, of course he has to denounce Isaiah as the source, denounce it as a sign, because he has a narrative, and he's forcing a created character named Jesus, instead of Emmanuel, uh, who was living during the Roman period and who didn't fulfill the prophecy. He died. <laughs> he failed. <laughs> and so, yeah, the author, therefore, is now identified as post-destruction of the temple, 72 AD. And uh, uh, there's more anachronisms as well that place the date potentially even past Constantine and his Nicene Creed. But uh, we won't go into that. And so, uh, the Smiths know this. Because they're talking about stuff that didn't happen. Remember, the Book of Mormon is not a true history. It was not from original plates. <clears throat> and it was not buried in the ground, therefore, because it never existed. But, I've been telling you about the Knights Templar, about how they had found Egyptian treasure plates and became filthy rich as they're protecting and and be in the marketplace for pilgrims going to Jerusalem. <coughs> and so they became filthy rich, and then eventually the Pope, uh, later Pope, said, all right, hey, I want the power and the glory. <laughs> it's so Friday the 13th. <coughs> and then they came to America. They had ships. They knew how to sail. They came to America just as the Vikings came to America. And uh, they had built, or I carved, because it was a, uh, a land purchase, uh, the Kensington Stone. They had purchased the land from the Mandan Indian tribe, the whole ha eastern half of the United States. And the caves in southern Illinois, where the first and the last solar eclipse cross, they knew about that too. And that's where they buried in the caves, in the ground, 
treasure plates in Egyptian. See where we're going with this? See what Smiths were doing. And so I did the video telling you about how Joseph Smith uh, claimed that he obtained the plates in the hill Camorra that were buried under a stone. Well, how did he translate these supposed plates buried under a stone? By burying them in a hat with a stone over them. Two stones, technically. The exact same process. That's the code. He's trying to tell us in his history the code to interpreting the Book of Mormon. <clears throat> and so here let's go to uh, Lehi's dream is it 10 or Lehi predicts Lehi tells of the death yeah this must be it uh, let me find wait a minute or is it before this uh, it came to pass after speaking the words of his dream. Nope, we need to go back. Back. Nope. Nine is Nephi interrupting. Lehi sees a vision. There we go. Eight. Ah, okay. So, they're at the top of the Reed, Red, Red Sea. Reed Sea is the Exodus refers to the afterlife of the Egyptians. So there was no parting of the Reed Sea. It was a retelling of the creation glyph. The parting of the waters, dry land emerging. Yeah. I've already done that. So uh, they're gathering seed and grain of every kind and also seeds of fruit of every kind. They're in Bountiful. No, they're not. They're not in Bountiful, what am I saying? <sighs> That's uh, top of the Red Sea. And they're uh, about to, to go... Aren't they supposed to... Okay. Because there's... they got to go back and get the wives. And that's when they decide they had yeah so this is not it this is they were preparing to leave without wives <laughs> but remember uh, Lehi in the beginning first chapter of Nephi first Nephi gets a book and says Jerusalem's going to be destroyed and so he then is told you've been good and faithful you need to leave but he doesn't bring the book he then later after getting to the Reed, uh, the Red Sea uh, and uh, having Nephi born and then Nephi being at the most 10 years <laughs> that's not part of it it's all encoded So time accuracy is not important in the story. They didn't care about those minute details. And uh, <clears throat> and so then he has Nephi and his sibling brothers <clears throat> go and get the book that prophesies of the destruction of Jerusalem. Because, yeah, Isaiah and Jeremiah prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem. <laughs> and, and so he gets a book in his dream, but doesn't get the Bible to bring with him. And instead, then escapes for his life, but then sends his brother or boys back to go get him. And so keep that in mind. <clears throat> because this is part of the code because the tree of life is about the last days destruction of America 
<coughs> he, they, Nephi even says that the angel told him it's in the book of Revelation. Well, who's this angel again? Hmm. Yeah, I already told you, William Morgan. <coughs> Canandaigua, New York. And so, yes, that's part of the secret plot, is that the Scottish Rites Illuminati, the Doctrine of Lucifer, are purposely going to fulfill the book of Revelation. Because Albert Pike specifically says, at the Third World War, they will destroy Christianity. How are they going to destroy Christianity? They're going to fulfill it for the villain part, but they know Christianity's got it wrong on the Christ. And so there will be no savior according to the learning of the Christians. Remember Book of Mormon, 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 2, learning of the Jews. See, this enemy thinks that if they can obtain enough power over the whole world, a single mortal man will have no power to stop them. And thus they destroy the Jews, and they destroy the Christians. And, yeah, Islam too. In the process. That's their whole plan. That's how they're going to destroy religion and emerge with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of the inverted pentagram. <clears throat> and so, I, I have dreamed a dream, or in other words, I have seen a vision. Because of the things which I've seen, blah, 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 and I fear, and so he sees Laman and Lemuel in a dark and dreary wilderness. And he saw a man. He was dressed in a white robe, and he came and stood before me. And uh, he bade me to follow him. And he was a dark and dreary waste. So this man comes to Joseph Smith Sr., William Morgan, and tells him about the plot. Hi, uh, and large and spacious field, and he beheld a tree. Here's the tree of life. The tree of life is Jewish mystical. It is not Jewish. It is Jewish mysticism. And I wish I could show the book by Joe Sampson, a Mormon, who believed that the Book of Mormon is written by the finger of God, thus the title of his book and uh, he's got YouTube videos but what I've pointed out that he's done is exposed that yeah it confirms Joseph Smith senior is the one who's involved in writing the replacement of the 116 pages so now go back into the section 3 and section 10 and the Lord speaking to Joseph Oops, the church service missionaries missed another coded name. It's Joseph Smith Sr. Now plug it in with the understanding of Sidney Rigdon and his manuscript lost that he obtained from the Batavian Press because Solomon Spaulding died and couldn't pay for the publication. And so the Batavian Press can't publish the book on their own they need the money from the author and thus to give royalties to the author they can't just claim it themselves and so they gave it to Sidney Rigdon who was a regular at their press place because he buys the latest books that come out and, and uh, gets to take manuscripts that are unpublished and the author is dead and gave up on him and uh, so he had it in his collection for uh, that period of time that he had obtained it. <coughs> and so we know from section 3 and section 10 that the Smiths already knew about Sidney Rigdon. They already knew about the manuscript of Solomon Spaulding. 
because they say Nephites and the Lamanites. That's from Solomon Spalding's record. And, uh, and so it's fascinating as you realize how pissed Senior is with Junior. <laughs> because if you listen to the video where I went over the history, uh, jo Junior didn't just lose the 116 pages to Martin Harris. N none of that happened. The wife did not lose it. No, it was destroyed because Martin Harris was the free anti-Mason uh, in the in Palmyra on that committee uh, because of the William Morgan thing. But the Smiths obviously can't say, "Oh, yeah, we were helping William Morgan. We helped him escape the nation because uh, they were going to kill him." Yeah, no, he can't expose himself. He has to keep it all a secret. That's why it's all encoded. <coughs> And uh, and so Junior uh, lost his, his firstborn died. They go to the Methodist Church for comfort, and the Methodist Church said, "Hey, aren't, weren't you arrested for being a glass looker in March of 1826? <laughs> Get out of here! You will not become a Methodist." He sort of encodes that he was told by Jesus in 18. 20 not to join any Christian church because they're all an abomination <coughs> uh, oops uh, I guess he was hoping nobody would know that history of his no man knows his history right uh, and uh, that's why it was encoded uh, numbers chapter 12 verse 6 that's why dreams and visions are all in this as well <coughs> is they're setting themselves up as visionaries, dreamers. And uh, uh, and so, yeah, Martin Harris took advantage of Joseph Smith's period of weakness, losing his firstborn and getting kicked out of Harmony, Pennsylvania, and having to then move to Susquehanna River, Pennsylvania. It's the reason why there's that confusion in his account where he calls it Harmony, Susquehanna River, Pennsylvania. No Methodist church near that location in Susquehanna. You have to do some traveling to get to the closest one. <clears throat> and so, but Harmony, north of Pittsburgh, right in between Sidney Rigdon in Ohio and the Smith Farm in New York. Huh. Interesting. So, in other words, Sidney Rigdon can work on the manuscripts, have them sent and stopped over in Harmony, where Joseph Smith can then fool Martin Harris with his hat trick <coughs> and uh, provide him with uh, scribble drawings <laughs> to take to Charles Anthon, who then says, I can't read a sealed book. Yeah, so that's how all that happened. As a refresher memory for you, like I said, we're now 34 minutes in, and we haven't, we just barely touched the Tree of Life dream. <clears throat> this is why I can't go into detail. I've already gone into too much detail, <clears throat> and so I, uh, the Tree of Life refers to Jewish mysticism but he sees an iron rod uh, but Nephi seems to uh, be the one who emphasizes this uh, fruit most exceedingly sweet tasted the fruit thereof to exceed whiteness and I partook the fruit exceedingly joy I began to be desirous that my family should partake and desirous of all fruit uh, Joseph Smith became a Jewish mystic with the new Israelites in new in Vermont in case you were wondering about that connection uh, that's where he got the holiness to the Lord parchment which is a star chart and so yes the Smiths were involved in astronomy so they knew obviously 23rd September 2017 
as a future date and thus knowing that the president was going to be a part of that. It also has to do with William Morgan finding out that hey they're going to fulfill Revelation the date is 23rd September 2017 for the sign of the Son of Man and so they're going to have a puppet king put on the throne of America and etc etc the rest of the Book of Mormon uh, and uh, <coughs> yeah he doesn't talk about the iron rod here here he goes verse 19 and it came to pass that I saw them, but they would not come and partake of the fruit. And I beheld a rod of iron. Again, Revelation chapter 12. The son of man, the man-child, as it's worded, uh, is to rule with an iron rod. Rod of iron. <coughs> and, uh, and so following the iron rod is also following the Christ, the Messiah, this mortal man in the last days, to get to the tree of life, which is Zion. And it extended along the bank of the river. Uh, the bank of the river is filthy waters, uh, as Nephi clarifies to us, because so much was Lehi focused on the tree of life that he didn't bother looking at the filthy river Nephi did <laughs> uh, straight and narrow path that was directly with the iron rod now they say the word of God yeah it's also scripture from the Bible that they refer to uh, but again Jacob uh, will later on uh, tell us that all the prophets of the Bible testify of Christ of this Christ specifically and so everything has to do with this Christ <clears throat> as the Smiths call him a mortal man as well according to the learning of the Jews uh, you know, and head of the fountain large and spacious field been the world saw numerous concourse of people pressing forward that they might obtain the path which led to the tree of which I stood. So these are Christians. They're trying to get to Zion. And Zion's in the Bible too. But it, they uh, the mist of darkness <coughs> which the great and abominable church uh, causes the stumbling block with scriptures taking out plain and precious parts that's mists of darkness and as a result uh, people get lost wander off uh, they never get to Zion because they don't hold to the last days Messiah uh, and there are only a few who do uh, and so you need to also remember the Smiths are thinking in terms of Junior is supposed to be this Messiah of whom people are supposed to cling to uh, to get to Zion. That was his whole intention. Uh, he was assassinated. But 103 verse 16, a future Mormon from the apostate church is supposed to fulfill and restore. Uh, and so ashamed uh, side of the river uh, so here we have uh, the people in the great and spacious building uh, were filthy rich and were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come and partaken of the fruit those who were believers in this Christ who was to restore and establish Zion and uh, they were people were ashamed by the mocking because of those that were scoffing at them and as a result they fell into forbidden paths and were lost and they didn't have belief strong enough to get to the end and uh, identify come unto Christ literally 
<coughs> and uh, Doctrine and Covenants section 45 again another passage that I've talked about that is not decoded it's not the Jews it's not Jerusalem being referred to there it's America it's the great and abominable church of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints it's Mormons they are said to be mocking scoffing at the Christ whom they persecute and that the Mormons are going to weep when it's exposed what they've been doing wrong so as ex-Mormons that's great news <laughs> to watch as Mormons get confounded and bust down and weep because of their wickedness it's gonna be a glorious day for us isn't it <laughs> because they were not holding to the iron rod they had the Book of Mormon in their possession they talked the talk they walk the walk as they go out on missions for the wrong church but they never figured out the code to be on the right side of history and thus they're going to weep I mean this is going to do serious damage to the Mormons I mean, you guys at least understood that the Book of Mormon's not history that uh, Sidney Rigdon was the author stuff like that so you've got a little bit of a buffer for the shock that you're going through as I'm telling you your hearts are a little more prepared to believe what I'm telling you whereas Mormons oh hell no <laughs> they're gonna be pissed at what I'm saying here uh, so big difference but uh, I the interesting thing is that he divides uh, Lehi's sons into two camps believers versus unbelievers and uh, there's of both sides there's a leader Laman for the unbelievers Nephi for the believers and so yes they do talk about there are only two churches church of the devil church of the Lamb of God uh, that plays a part in this as well okay so here Nephi is claiming he's making this record the Book of Mormon no junior did not make this record it is not an abridgment of Joseph Smith senior that's just what they want to present to us that's how we know it so it worked <laughs> they have tricked us into thinking that Joseph Smith claimed to have written the Book of Mormon no he didn't it was Joseph senior who was the mastermind of taking over William Morgan's book uh, that talked about the destruction of America uh, that's what it's referring to and so I uh, understand that but isn't it interesting the coincidence Mormons are never gonna get it 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 okay so then after Lehi's dream he then goes on to talk to his family about it and make the prediction yea even 600 years from the time that my father left Jerusalem a prophet would the Lord God raise up among the Jews even a Messiah or in other words a savior of the world this is deep code because it involves a trail of code to get to what they're trying to talk about here we know that the Roman period is not when the sign of the Son of Man occurred it's 23rd September 2017 so what are they talking about here with 600 years from 597 BCE 600 years isn't even the time when
1363 is the date on the Kensington Stone. 600 years is 1963. He was born in 1970, as I already did that video. That's seven year difference. They could have easily taken rafts down the Missouri River to get to southern Illinois. So it wouldn't have taken seven years to get from the Dakota region to southern Illinois. But seven years is uh, 2017 to 2024. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Huh. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> More will have to be done on that to confirm. But that is interesting. Because they do know 2017. And so they're establishing 600 years. So maybe they don't know about uh, 1390, well, is it 93? 63. 1363. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. That just occurred to me. Uh, but 600 years from 597 is 4 CE. Was there anything significant in 4 CE with signs in the heaven? Yes, there was. On April 8th. When is our third day of darkness? April 8th, 2024. So 2020 years later, it's 2020 right now. Helaman 7. 7. <laughs> the Smiths did not have, uh, uh, well, I think it was probably P. Pratt who even added chapters. But I, they had to have had chapters. There was verses, I think, that Parley P. Pratt did. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if it is actually Helaman chapter 7. Hmm. Because that would coincide with confirming. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the total solar eclipse interesting point it was from the Netherlands Nederlander into Russia who's the foreign government symbolic of Babylon who put Zedekiah symbolic of the president on the throne of Jerusalem symbolic of the presidency of the United States Russia And then 33 is also a part of that as the Scottish Rites. The honorary rank is 33 degree masonry. And uh, uh, 3,333 3, 3, 3, double 33s for the double eagle of the Scottish Rite is the year from the Exodus according to the Jews. When Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, you probably heard the news talking about how it's the new year for the Jews. Yeah. That began 3,333 years from the time of Jerusalem. Thus, I pointed that out, I'm pretty sure, uh, in Helaman 7, because that's 2020. The coup of America. The uh, death of the Chief Justice. Uh-oh. I hope she wasn't assassinated. I mean, she already had health problems. She was a fighter, though. But I hope. 
I mean, to have her die on New Year's, again, that's suspicious, but everybody thought it was a, a wonderful tribute to her Jewish God, as a Jew herself. I hope she was not assassinated, but a little coincidental, right before the election, seriously? So Trump gets to put in a third? <laughs> but interestingly, they also did, according to the third Nephi, where he loses. Which concerns me. <laughs> because this is happening exactly as the Book of Mormon is telling us. But we're not going over those others. We're going over the Tree of Life. <laughs> this is we're at fifty-one minutes. Dear God. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, Messiah. Well, we'll make it Lehi's dream then. We won't go into Nephi. So, okay. So this is the message that William Morgan gave to Senior in Canandaigua, New York. And so here they're they're claiming, oh, he's baptized in Beth Bara, uh, the house of creation. Uh, again, you need to understand Egyptian for that. The house of creation. I already informed you that the parting of the Reed Sea is the Egyptian afterlife with the creation story of the separating of the waters and the rising of the land. Well, what's the land? Well, that's man. Not just man, but a man, the Messiah, Horus, who is to restore the kingdom of his deceased, assassinated father, Osiris. See how Smith's even fulfilled that part as well? Because the enemy are purposely fulfilling prophecy to destroy the religion. They think that no one will dare to molest or make afraid. And, uh, and so, yeah, this is the last day's Messiah. You need to think in terms of the learning of the Jews. Do not say, oh, oh, yeah, it corrects the the, the book of the New Testament and it, it's really supposed to be this and that story and and this and that and that and therefore and thus and this no we're not Christian don't think of the New Testament in terms of accurate as historically accurate it's not and uh, and so yes the New Testament Gospels are just other prophecies of this latter-day Messiah as Matthew himself gives us 23rd September 2017 <clears throat> so you need to see that in that light and I know Christians are dead set on their interpretation and there is no other interpretation an interpretation an interpretation we have an interpretation and we need no other interpretation <laughs> just like Mormons uh, and so, <sighs> and so, yeah, they're they're technically referring us to the New Testament gospel story, which is a prophecy of the latter day Messiah. And so, don't get confused into thinking that the church is supposed to be Christian and preaches Trinity and all that crap. No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, after they had slain the Messiah, that's Osiris, not Horus. They're... He shall rise from the dead. It's not rise from the dead. The Son becomes the Father. The Father becomes the Son. Superman and make himself manifest by the Holy Ghost unto the Gentiles. Touching! <clears throat> the Gentiles are the Americans. 
as Nephi tells us. Uh, here's the olive tree. A parable of the olive tree of Joseph Smith's in section 101 of the Doctrine and Covenants. The leaders of the Latter-day Apostate Church are going to abandon the Mormons. This is adding to the misery and weeping of the Mormons as prophesied in DNC 45. Mormons are just going to be destroyed with their thought processes. Again, that was the whole plan of the Illuminati who invaded, infiltrated the Scottish Rites, whom Albert Pike says, hey, we're going to destroy all religion, and the Church of Lucifer will take over. Uh, grafted in, come to the knowledge of the true Messiah. Bingo! Do you see that? The Gentiles, who are Christian, who have the Bible, who believe in the New Testament Jesus rather than Emmanuel, <laughs> will come to the knowledge of the true Messiah, the learning of the Jews. And so after this manner did he prophesy. And so then Nephi starts in verse 17. He heard the words of his father, and he saw in a vision, and then spake by the power of Christ, received faith in, on the Son of God, and the Son of God was the Messiah who should come. See, this is the Smiths talking. They're saying the Messiah who should come still. It's not the Roman Jesus. Alright. And so then we get into Nephi. Nephi sees the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> nope. Because, uh, I've told you with the history, there are rules for joining a masonry lodge. You can't switch from York Rites to Scottish Rites or Scottish Rites to York Rites. If you join as a member to Scottish Rites, you've got to remain Scottish Rites. If you join the York, you got to remain York. It's that simple. And so uh, Heber C. Kimball, under Masonry, yeah, he fooled a lot of people, didn't he? <coughs> uh, but uh, uh, so Joseph Smith Sr. Uh, names his second son Hiram after the spelling of Hiram Abiff and we know that he was a part of the York Rites masonry in 1800 when Hiram is born thus giving him the name because there's a name shift first he calls Alvin Alvin which is an Alvin thing from the the Celt and then goes right into Hebrew Jewish mystical Freemasonry with Hiram and uh, uh, then Joseph which is biblical and then Book of Mormon tells us all about that one and then there's others there's Sophronia tree of life mystic mystical uh, name so the daughter is uh, referred to as wise, Sophronia, Sophis, Sophia, Sophie from Da Vinci Code. <coughs> and then they go into Don Carlos. Don meaning ruler of the world. Wonder what Joseph Sr. was thinking on that one. Uh, Brigham Young called hit one of his sons Don Carlos as well. Uh, so apparently that was a popular name, or Brigham Young was purposely mocking the Smiths uh, with the name of Don Carlos. Don Carlos is the one who carved the inverted pentagram in bronze for the Eagle Gate. I almost blew it again. The Eagle Gate. So, uh, here's a... Uh, yeah, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The church just changed 
their handbook of instructions again this year. They just released it publicly earlier this year. And it ties to my lawsuit against them, but they released it earlier this year. And since then, they keep coming out with changes and additions and other corrections. They've never done this many changes to the handbook ever in this rapid a time. Do they not know <laughs> how the church is supposed to be? Yeah, it's a distraction tactic to cause confusion. So that Mormons are going to be like, oh, what is the policy? Am I allowed to drink Mountain Dew or am I not allowed to drink Mountain Dew? I don't know. <laughs> it's purposely designed that way. But the true God is not a God of confusion. He is the same. And so when he says, hey, don't have sex with your neighbor's wife, he means it. There is no excuse or justification for it. Get your own wife and hopefully she'll be good to you. <laughs> but uh, he that diligently seeketh shall find and the mysteries of God. That's Greek. Mysteries refer to mysterions who are initiates in the temples. Just like fraternities you are initiated into the fraternity, the temple. You are initiated into the temple. You become Christ. Anointed, Christ, anointing, Messiah, anointed, same thing. When you are washed, that's for high priest, then you are anointed for king, Christ. That's the temple. That's why we're not Christian. <laughs> and the Jews, likewise, remove that from Judaism because they believe that the temple is only for sacrifices. They've forgotten the whole point and purpose of having a temple because they've been without one for so long. And repetitively, as uh, uh, temples keep getting destroyed. So... There, there's the coding of Lehi's Tree of Life dream. Not Nephi's. Man, over an hour, my goodness.